Hello, my dear friends. Today we're talking about using your planner. You know, every now and then I come back to this over and over again, use your planner. If you don't plan your day and you don't follow that plan, it's unlikely if you are a sidetracked home executive type of person that you're going to be successful in the things you wanted to do, whether it's at work or in your home. You need a plan for the day. You need a long range plan and a short range plan. You need routines, you need the whole thing. So the plan that I am sharing with you every day on my Patreon channel, exactly what to do, and in all the videos that you can see here in your playlists, etc., they all add up to one thing. Every day we have something to do whether it's on Monday Weekly Home Blessing Hour and 15 minutes in our zone and all of our routines, or Tuesday where it's rest and relaxation. We're going to do our routines and have rest and relaxation. That's the day that we're doing that. No, no planning and desk day, no uh, zone, no basic weekly plan is what I was trying to say instead of planning and desk day. No basic weekly plan and no zone work, but you still have to do your routines. Those are gonna happen every day. So every day, have a plan. I highly recommend that you go to Kimmy's website from she'sinherapron.com and look at her annual planners. They are designed for people like you, people who get sidetracked, people who have trouble with the plan. They are excellent planners. I highly recommend. I have been using them now. This is my second year. I've been with her since the very beginning, so we're going into year two, 2023, and very excited about some changes that she's making to her planner. So go out there and give it a look. She's in her planner.com and get your planner ready. If you don't feel like you can afford a planner like that, then my suggestion is this year, look and see how much they are because they didn't go up from last year. They're probably not gonna go up if they do not too much plan out how much you need to save every month so that when it comes time, this important tool is ready for you. In the meantime, use whatever you've got. You've got to have a plan. Plan out your day, plan out your week, plan out your month, plan it out. You're not going to do loads and loads and loads. You're going to do your routine, 15 minutes in your zone, and anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours, depending on what it is for your basic weekly plan. There are only, there's seven weekly plan items, but only four of them are really deeply active. Let me go over them with you. On Mondays, we do a weekly home blessing hour. That is an hour long. And it is a blessing, not a deep clean of your house. It's 10 minutes of stripping your bed, putting the sheets in the washer, drying them, putting them back on the bed, a total of 10 minutes. It's mopping the kitchen and the bathrooms, a total of 10 minutes. It's vacuuming or sweeping the rest of the house, not mopping the rest of the house, vacuuming or sweeping or dust mopping the rest of the house, a total of 10 minutes, which means two minutes a room if you pick five rooms. It's dusting the house, that's two minutes a room if you pick five rooms. It's wiping the spots off of the glass, Two minutes a room if you pick five rooms or just all the glass. It's less than 10 minutes to get it wiped down. In fact, that one is called a baby job. In my mind, you can give that away to a younger person uh, or child. If they're capable, then you can give them that job. Emptying the little garbage cans in the bathroom, in the, de in the office by your desk, in the bedroom, those little, those little bins, those can be emptied a total of 10 minutes to empty and reline. And the final thing is, let's see, let me think now. The three baby jobs are dusting, emptying the garbage, and wiping the glass. Oh yeah, so the little ones can dust. If you have a nice feather duster, uh, I would recommend going to flylady.net slash tools. Her feather dusters are awesome, and they will last you for years and years if you take good care of them, and they do the job in a short period of time, so highly recommend that. Um, I don't get any kickbacks from anybody on any of this. Uh, it, these are things I really believe in and things that I personally use. All right, so what we're going to do today is think about these routines and, and think about the basic weekly plan. So the basic weekly plan on Monday is an hour. If you work outside the home, then you're going to do it on Saturday morning along with your four days, four days, which are 15 minutes each of the zone. So the zone is 15 minutes, four of those is one hour. So on Saturday morning, you'll be working for two hours if you work outside the home or you work inside the home full time at a payroll job. 
So that would be one hour of uh, basic weekly plan, one hour of zone work. That happens Saturday. Uh, the second day of the week is rest and relaxation. It is your free day. Now, as a person who has worked outside the home for 40 years, my recommendation is that you don't get a free day. You have to take your free day as you can throughout the week on your drive to and from work, on your break, on your lunch hours, those things that you don't get at home. So you can listen to a book on tape, you can have lunch with friends, etc. That's your free time and it's sprinkled throughout the week. Make sure you may take advantage of that. I realize there are seasons when you can't at work, but mostly you can. And then, um, Wednesday is planning and desk day. That's a that's a that's a very passive, quiet um, thing to do. However, it's required and it is a long. It takes about two hours to do all the things because you're going to be dealing with your food, your finance, your in your uh, inbox, and your planner. So that's going to happen Wednesdays. If you are payroll, you're going to do that Sunday afternoon. It tends to be a quiet day. You can plan out the next week. Thursday is errand day for at-home homemakers, where you go to the grocery store, you go to Costco, you go to the library, you go to the dry cleaner, you go pick up a birthday present, whatever it is you need to do for your husband, for example, or your children, maybe they need poster boards. That's happening on errand day. So that requires a plan because you have to go and think about how you're gonna get everything and get your groceries and get back home in a timely manner to make dinner, okay? If you're a payroll, then you're going to delegate that to someone who can drive in your family, or you're going to pick up your groceries uh, from the delivery service on your way home from work one day. And then we've got uh, day five is car and purse day, a really little one. And that's where you just every week take everything out of your car that doesn't belong in there, shake the mats, just so that if somebody says, can I have a ride? You don't feel so embarrassed to have them in your car. Okay, it's not a deep clean, but it's a, it's a definite improvement. Saturday is family fun day. Sunday is renew your spirit day. So the four active things that we do are weekly home blessing hour, planning and desk day, errand day, and car and purse day. And car and purse is so little that you can actually move it and combine it with something and get yourself another little bit of time off. Maybe if you double up on your errands, I mean on your um, 15 minute zones, like so let's say you decided to do 30 minutes of zone on Thursday and add your car and purse day on that, then whole Friday could be a free day as well. You can do that. You can do it any way you please, as long as you do it and you don't work more than I say to work. But this is going to make such a difference in your life. This getting this pattern down, having this plan, knowing what you have to do, knowing what your commitments are. That's probably the biggest one is people say to me, Kat, I couldn't do it because I had to take my daughter to swimming and it started at seven in the morning and we didn't get home till one in the afternoon so I couldn't do anything. Really? What happened to one in the afternoon till dinner time? What's happening in those times? So my idea for you is to plan out your day to plug in all your commitments, including travel time, and say, what's left? If I have to be at seven o'clock at swim lessons with my child, swim team with my child in the summer, I know we're not in summer anymore, but let's just say we are, then I need to get up a half hour before I have to get her up or him up to get my morning routine done so that when they get up, they have time for their morning routine and breakfast, and we can get out of the house. And when I get back home, I'll do my 15 minute zone. I'll do my uh, basic weekly plan item. I'll make dinner. We'll do clutter stops for the times that we're home. I'm gonna feel so much more in control, and you will. You're gonna feel so much more in control if you make a plan and you follow your plan. Not a crazy plan, an easy plan. The dripping of water wears away stone plan. The I see you and I have for a plan for you plan. So that when you have a plan and you run across something you see that needs doing, you don't have to stop and do it like the sidetrack people that we are. And we end up, you know, three rooms over doing something totally unintended because we keep getting sidetracked from one thing to the other. Instead, you say, I see you and I have a plan for you. And you take your planner out and you say, to do. I'm gonna put this on my to-do list. And when I sit down to look at my planner tonight, I'm gonna to figure out where I'm gonna plug that in later on. Maybe it's next week, maybe it's next month. It doesn't matter because the dripping of water wears away stone and eventually your home is going to be full of peace, organized and streamlined. That's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that you always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful.